Ant, ya se yeah. la verga. Los paper, paper hands. Paper hands. Yeah, so let me open this chart up. How do you open this chart? I just want to make it bigger. Okay, so right here you can see, Mickey, we have um, downward movement. This is on the 30 minute chart. Look at the five minute chart. You can see it's been consolidation. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I usually go look at the, the, uh, the one hour chart. Mm -hmm. So what what what's your process? So let's say let's say something like this happens yeah. where, where today was like sure. you know everything. Red well, if you heard if you heard the bad news, mm -hmm. for example, um, when it was at around forty six forty seven, mm -hmm. right here I was making money. I was getting in trades right here, mm -hmm. bullish. I was getting the green. You see the green candles. Mm -hmm. So I was getting in here, getting out here, and then I was uh, shorting it. Mm -hmm. So I was getting out like right here. You know when it starts changing uh -huh. and then you're not always going to guess it but you got to look at the trends but then the news came out of the feds the feds uh -huh. and we saw this dip so right here i got consolidated i lost a, a lot of money right because there. you didn't really see now if i had heard the news i would have shorted it and i would have probably still been in the trade look if you were right here it goes up a little but you hang in the trade this is a long trade mm -hmm. what i recommend people don't get greedy just get out like even right here Sell. just cash out mm -hmm. and then you make money like right now i was i was up like uh half a bitcoin mm -hmm. almost half a bitcoin like and then i lost it so now i transferred more money i had to go for example um you go into your um assets mm -hmm. you go to your sp spot wallet mm -hmm. and you deposit for example crypto mm -hmm. you, tra you transfer from, yeah. from your other so that's, wallet that's your address you copy it from over here like let's say uh, you have wallets this is my uh, block file mm -hmm. so I would just say okay yeah, I'm gonna you know withdraw so that's half a bit and I would send yeah that's half a Bitcoin mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and actually uh, you can get loans mm -hmm. so actually you know and they, this is the interest they pay you on block file which is pretty cool yeah. Also, um, Coinbase, they don't pay interest, but they also they loan you 40% of your uh, Bitcoin so as collateral. It, it would be, I think it would be good for you to talk about it like more in depth later, yeah. maybe, you know, um, for about sure. how uh, certain like brokers like Coinbase mm -hmm. or, you know, different brokers can lend you money oh, yeah. based on yeah. how many Bitcoins you have. No? Sure. Coinbase is the number one right now. They just came out with that like two months ago about the loans. They could loan you up to $1 million on Bitcoin, but they put 40% of collateral. Yeah. So, so uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Right now, I think that's great, mm -hmm. even though they don't pay you interest. BlockFi pays you interest. Voyager pays you interest. Mm -hmm. And that that's just by having... But BlockFi lends you up to $10,000 only. They don't, oh. they don't lend oh, you... Okay. Um, they don't lend you the... Uh, the million. Yeah, yeah, say. they don't lend you the million. So Voyager, the, you make money, you make interest just by having the coins in, in their exchange, right? Yes, exactly. Just by having them there. Yeah. You don't have to You don't do have to anything, stake them. No you stake don't have them. to stake them or anything. Mm -hmm. You could just, just by having in the exchange, which is better than having the money in the bank because... Or in Coinbase where, where it's... Yeah, just Coinbase is just sitting, sitting there, yeah. yeah and, and you're actually taking a risk that they might actually... Uh, someone could hack you. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think that that's better. It's better than the bank, but it's not recommended to have it on the exchange. Yeah. Oh, shit. Go back to the... 
So what's your favorite like app to trade in or well, to, to buy? So just to buy. So Bitcoin. trading, trading for example, this is on Femix. This is what I call trading. Mm -hmm. Where is the chart? Where did it go? Disappear. Yeah. So, no. but trading is Femix. Like when you do short-term trading, that's what I considered. Um, that's what I considered um, um, trading. Okay. Like if you do short-term trading, these are mm -hmm. called derivatives. These are like, um, um, what do you call it? Leverage trading, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you put some Bitcoin in and then you leverage it. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the volume is pretty, it's pretty high now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Ray Dalio just came out and said that, uh, he, uh, you know, he's the number one hedge fund in the world. He said that you should like keep not one percent but two percent now in Bitcoin. So he's actually moving up. Mm -hmm. He's a little bullish. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. You okay. have a lot of guys like Kim, Michael Saylor, billionaires talking about keeping money in Bitcoin. So back mm -hmm. then, like in 2017, when I got into crypto, mm -hmm. a lot of people used to make fun of me or say, "Oh, it's stupid coin." Um, you had a uh, JP Morgan, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the CEO, I forget his name. He would mm -hmm. say that if he, any of his employees had crypto, that he would fire them. No. Yeah. Way. It was pretty crazy. Wow. So, now, what so does he think about it now? now? I think he's trying to make his own coin. <laughs> I don't think, or maybe he might have Bitcoin, but you know, he, he's not going to share it. I'm yeah, sure because yeah. no one wants to go back on yeah. the word. But yeah, I think crypto is like, for example, Bitcoin is like uh, what Blockbuster used to be with Netflix. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is Netflix, right? So everything that is um, that was concrete, like for example, vinyl records, eight tracks, CDs, they're all they're obsolete, mm -hmm. right? What is it now? Is um, digital radio, Digi yeah, digital streaming. satellite streaming, right? Mm -hmm. Everything streaming. So what did they do? They took physical properties and they transferred them into digital. Mm -hmm. So, um, Bitcoin is digital gold. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was going to ask you. So, do you think that Bitcoin will replace gold? Uh, it it's to... already happening. Yeah, right? Yeah, Bitcoin. So, the thing about gold is interesting. Gold has been around for 5,000 years, right? And it's mm -hmm. been a store of value. But just because something, like Michael Saylor says, just because something that is uh, 5,000 years old, wooden ships used to be 5,000 years old. They, they don't use wooden ships anymore. Exactly. That yeah. doesn't mean right. just because something right. is old doesn't mean it's good, right? Yeah. There, so there's a way to improve it. You make ships out of steel now and, you know, planes are made better now. So you have to innovate and create new, new technology and grow with it. So um, Bitcoin is that. It's divisible. It's easily transferable through borders. I mean, you can have $10 trillion of, of, of Bitcoin in your in your hardware and transfer it to any part of the world. Yeah, you know what? I, I just, I went to Cabo. Mm -hmm. um, so we live in California, right? Mm -hmm. We went to Mexico. When we were crossing the border to go to Mexico, there were um, um, cops asking you pretty much how, how, how much cash were you carrying. Right. I was like, I don't have any cash with me but i was carrying crypto so they, yeah. they they there's no way for them to know right i mean they can start asking and that's the thing going back to that i just heard a, a something you know there's a lot of conspiracy theories that oh because back in 1971 when the feds actually took the gold off the uh, the, the dollar off the gold standard um you know that caused a crash um but also like I think that they could very well, like right now, I think the dollars, it's it's being crashed. Like they're printing, they printed because uh, of COVID, uh, $5 trillion, you know? So do they think that we're stupid that we're not gonna see the effects of inflation? Yeah. Come on, like the same, it, like I think one third of the dollars that are circulating today, they got printed out in the last year or two. Imagine. It's insane. Yeah. So the dollar in your pocket, if you're saving money, you're losing. Yeah, it's pretty much like if, there was an asteroid that came to Earth with a lot of gold. gold. It would crash the gold market, exactly. right? Because the gold, the world's gold supply fits in two Olympic-sized swimming pools, and they keep digging for gold every day. So yeah, they're yeah. they're gonna find more and more. Yeah. You cannot find more Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a a, a, a finite supply. That's mm -hmm. what makes it also valuable. That it's only 21 trillion Bitcoin that are gonna be mined. Mm -hmm. Um. And I can explain mining as well. I know mean, for a lot of the people that are not that are, don't understand. So mining. Uh, since Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transaction, for example, I'll, I'll send you, you're in Cabo and I'll send you 
uh, Bitcoin. You say, hey, I, I need some money to buy some swimming shorts. And you can send a million dollars. Yeah, I could send a yeah. million dollars or, you know, a, yeah. a Satoshi, which breaks down the... So Bitcoin price is uh, 40... One. 41,800 today, right? Mm -hmm. So if I break it down in Satoshi, I could send you a fraction of a Bitcoin. It doesn't have to be one whole Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You could start investing in Bitcoin and it could be a fraction. It could be like $500, mm -hmm. $700. It doesn't have to be a full Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. So that that's that's a good thing. Um, also, Bitcoin has gone up like every year, almost like 300%. Gold price hasn't done anything in the last 10 years. So there's actually a bullish case for, for Bitcoin. Yeah, it's very volatile. Like you got to be able to stomach 30 to 40 percent drops in weeks or months. Bro. Yeah, it's part of it. Uh, that's where the term hodling came from. Hold on to dear life uh, because it, it is a bumpy road. I mean, I've been in Bitcoin and since 2017 and it's been an eternity. I wrote it from about 3,500, 5,000. Then it wrote up to I was chasing it. I bought Bitcoin at 10, 17 and then it crashed all the way down to three. And I was like, okay, time to buy more. <laughs> Instead of selling and panic selling, uh, no, I decided to buy a little more. And that's what you do. It's called dollar cost averaging. So like right now I'm in this long trade where, uh, for example, um, if I can get this darn. Um, oh, you, you want the, the chart, right? <laughs> yeah, I want the chart it? back. How about move this? Uh, move that? Is it this? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there it is. So well, we, we care more about the chart. So, yeah, so we see the chart. Let's go, let's go to the one hour chart. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's been um, kind of holding steady at, we have a lot of support here at 40,500. As long as we don't break that support, we're good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look at this uh, volume here. Crazy. Yeah. That's where you could see right after the, 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 um, <clears throat> the bears came out right after the Fed news. The Fed news was right here. Mm -hmm. And it just came down. I was actually making money on this. Uh, I was I was shorting it. Yeah. I was shorting it because you see the patterns, right? You see the you see the patterns. Look. Mm -hmm. you, so every candle represents the one hour. So you see green, green, green. Three hours. So after yeah. that, and it hits a peak, you're like, okay, there might be a trend. You might catch it here. You might catch it here or up here at the peak. Mm -hmm. Obviously, no one's gonna catch it here. But if you're if you could catch it here and roll with that one. That's a good amount of money, especially if you're 10xing it. Or yeah. so the way we're leveraging is like you could you could use 5x, 10x, whatever you want. I'm actually so 10xing it. Yeah. So I'm 10xing it. What What's the limit? Ah, uh, you could do 100x, but oh, yeah. yeah, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. That, that. Dude, that's super scary, dude. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely don't want to do that. Mm -mm. Um. But uh, I would recommend, you know, this is only for experienced traders because this is more like, um, this is more um, um, obviously for, um, yeah. So, I mean, I have 10x leverage, right? So you could see yeah, there you go. Um, your risk limit is 3.5 Bitcoin um, out of 100 Bitcoin that you can, you can uh, put. Mm -hmm. So it's leverage. It doesn't mean that I have three full Bitcoin in here. I put mm -hmm. portion of it and then it leverages. Okay. So I'm down on this trade right now, uh, as you can see. Um, but I, I actually got in at around, this is, it took me, cause when I got wiped out here, I got consolidated. I jumped back in thinking it wasn't gonna go lower. I hadn't, the, the problem, I hadn't heard the news. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wait a minute, what's happening with my trade? Usually when this happens, a quick correction, yeah. I jump back in right here, because mm -hmm. then it goes whoop. But t tell them what, what the news were. Yeah, the, so the news that came out for all, for all those that have um, been under a rock in the last few days, um, the, feds the feds had announced uh, last week when uh, Jerome Powell and everyone met that they were gonna um, raise interest rates or talking about tapering. So what tapering means basically Oh, it's going to get complicated. So, um, like, for example, uh, real estate is like tied to these uh, mortgage backed securities. Right. And that's part of the um, uh, uh, bonds. So what are bonds? Bonds is an IOU. So, for example, um, people that trade bonds, like there are, that's actually another topic that I want to talk about. So the people that are in the bonds, they're not really making any money in a low rate environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's they're 
really making nothing. Yeah, exactly. So that's why a lot of people get into equities or stocks mm -hmm. because there's bigger investment there. Yeah. But what happens when rates go up? The when the feds raise the rates, the the equities crash like yeah. we're seeing. Because they it's not just the crypto market. It took down the equities, crypto, everything. Right? Yeah, exactly. They so they they pretty much want to stop inflation. So they are right. raising uh, interest rates to slow it down. To slow it down. So what happens is if if a company like was gonna get a a, a a loan to buy houses let's say or to buy uh, land or anything um it was very cheap right because the, the interest wasn't that high but right. now that that the fed is raising the interest rates it's going to be more expensive for them to get loans mm -hmm. to pay them back right true so that's what's happening so they they are pretty much trying to trying for companies to stop investing a little to stop buying so they can stop inflation that's that's pretty much what happened so they are also going to stop printing money for for the moment so that's what that's what brought uh bitcoin you know to the yeah market. that's one of the things that, uh you know you, they start spreading fud as well there's a lot of people spreading fud uh, fear uncertainty and doubt in the news in the yeah. mainstream media you hear a lot about that because uh covid right Omicron. well no the fud i mean like people oh, that are they are against bitcoin yeah. like you have some bigger forces for example because bitcoin is a threat to the uh the uh, fiat currency as we call it and i mean how can you trust fiat when they're printing they got a money printing machine i can't print more bitcoin no one controls it it's decentralized so uh, when they say in god we trust or trust the fed or trust the government how do we trust the government when they can print money at their disposal and no anytime they want that's not yeah i can't trust that that system yeah no. so actually i prefer a, a a coin or something that has no trust decentralized i don't have to trust anyone yeah exactly it, it's we trust each other mm -hmm. so bitcoin is a community where so going back to the mining when i send he's in cabo and he wants trunks i can send them a full bitcoin and say yeah i don't know they're going to be expensive trunks but like, or, you know, uh, whatever, La Peda, La Peda you wanna, see, whatever you want. Anything. <laughs> so uh, I send you the Bitcoin and then uh, it goes through uh, several confirmations. That's what's called mining. It goes through um, like whoever has the biggest hash rate or the fastest uh, computing power is the one who solves a mathematical problem and then um, gets a big, a small reward. That's yeah. called the mining. Uh, so there's already been 19 million Bitcoin that are mined. There's only 2 million to More. be mined. Mm -hmm. That's it. And every four years, there's what's called a happening. The Bitcoin rewards get cut in half. Okay. How much is it right now? Um, Six point. So I'm not sure exactly what the Bitcoin reward is. That's a good question. I think it's. But like they six. get cut in half. Yeah. Okay. So um, it, it 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 gets harder and harder to mine. It's in using up more energy. So obviously the price of Bitcoin has to remain high so that we can um, maintain certain. profitable for the, for because yeah. Bitcoin's got to remain at a certain price as well for it to be profitable for, for, um, for miners. If not, that could be a problem. Yeah. And you know, and I think uh, I'm going to talk conspiracy here, but Elon Musk is not stupid at all, you know, and, uh, and this is my theory. I think that Elon Musk, so Michael Saylor, the billionaire from MicroStrategy, he's the guy who convinced Elon Musk to invest in cryptos, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, he has a company called MicroStrategy. Yeah. Michael Saylor is a great guy. He's a genius. He went to MIT. He's like yeah, he's a great. rocket scientist, basically. He's a, he's, he's a big nerd. Mm -hmm. Awesome guy. So, he basically um, told uh, Elon Musk to invest in crypto and, and Bitcoin. And Elon Musk went ahead and invested in, in, in crypto. And actually, there was one quarter where he actually made more money on some sale of Bitcoin when he first invested it after the first quarter. Uh -huh. And he made more money than he did selling cars. No way. Yeah. <laughs> this was when Bitcoin was headed up to Crazy. 63 at an all-time high. Uh -huh. And then what did he do? He said, oh, um, uh, I, the only thing I don't like about Bitcoin, Bitcoin's no gonna, longer going to accept uh, money for Teslas because... Um, it's harmful to the environment yeah, because right. because China was um, uh, ir irresponsibly mining Bitcoin with coal, right? Yeah. They're using coal. So what happened? I'm not sure if that was the cause, but um, China was already cracking down on the Bitcoin miners. That's a big mistake for China. 
because there's a global currency war right now. Mm-hmm. Like wars are not being fought by um, by uh, with guns and, no. and you know um, it might be there there it's a global currency war. So like Russia, they're no longer accepting dollars in some cases. They're buying more gold, as a matter of fact. And I know U.S. is going buying gold. Everyone's buying gold. Yeah. China's buying gold. It's no secret. So yeah, it, it's just who's holding the hard assets, especially in an inflationary. You know, Market, it's yeah. it's wise to hold gold, real estate, and I'm gonna tell you why real estate. Um, uh, and in a second, it's very interesting. I heard something very interesting yesterday, okay. and there's also um, cryptos, uh, especially Bitcoin, because of the scarcity supply, the supply of Bitcoin. So these are good things to hold in an inflationary environment. Yeah. As a dollar, it's not wise to hold dollars in your pocket. Not anymore. Well, any any uh, fiat. So I think real estate is one of the uh, ways to uh, for people um, to hold wealth, especially if you're cash flowing property. Um, and I think the feds are not gonna let real estate crash. I, I think they're gonna do everything in their power to, um, and they manipulate the market too. For example, tapering, let's talk about tapering. So what does tapering mean? Tapering does not mean people confuse it with printing dollars. It doesn't mean they're gonna print less money, no. What they're saying is by tapering, they're gonna cut back on buying some of the um, bonds, mm-hmm. and which bonds is part of it is mortgage-backed securities. So, if you're doing if you're mortgage loan originating and you got a warehouse line and you sell it on the secondary market, you package it up with mortgage-backed securities, right? So, what happens in the case where the the, the feds are buying these mortgage-backed securities? They actually raise the competition. So they keep these mortgage-backed securities um, in, uh, how can I say, in demand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when they start tapering, that means they're going to cut back on less. I think they were buying like $80 billion a month. Yeah. Some crazy number. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So they're, they, it's not sustainable. You can't do that forever. Yeah. So now they're cutting back because they see inflation. But it, I think the long-term inflation is here to stay because... Um, for business owners and for everything else, our cost is up. So we have to pass that cost up. For example, when we remodel a house, we got to pass that on to the consumer. So they're going to pay a higher price, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think buying a house is wise because house prices are going to continue to keep going up. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, because they're not going to let the market, the housing market crash. That's why I feel better about it. Yeah. Um, you know, this is not financial advice, but I'm telling you, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy more properties. If you could buy a property, even the cash flows, so if the markets do dip and could pay itself, then you don't have to worry about selling the home because mm-hmm. you're collecting rents, right? It's paying itself. Yeah. yeah. And, and same thing with crypto. As long as the feds keep printing dollars. So I think this is what's going to happen is that because there's no elections going on, they can afford to raise the rates. Exactly. And then if, if, if the market starts crashing, which we already immediately saw people panic a little. Exactly. You see? So, and that's exactly what they want. That's exactly what they, what they want. They want fear on people, so they sell. Exactly, and elections are coming also. So we, there's no way for us to keep seeing this. No, no, no. Know, we're gonna see this. We're gonna see this now because no one's. There's no talks of elections. Yeah. But yeah. as elections get closer, everybody wants to be the hero. And right before elections, we're gonna start seeing the markets rise, Theo and Biden. we're gonna sell rates. Maybe negative rates, Theo Biden, yeah, and, Theo Biden. and uh, we're gonna we might see Trump come back, and yeah. you know, so I, whatever. Not to get political, I'm just saying play the markets. If you're if you're smart and you can read the markets and figure it out, I just need Bitcoin to crash to to break that forty forty two five mark right here. We're, we we could right get in a lot of resistance. Actually, wait, forty three, forty three five. If we can break this resistance at 42.7 and then break past 43.5 look at we'll be right back up because mm-hmm. there's like really no resistance there mm-hmm. it just kind of flew, flew down yeah, this is where right. you start building resistance when you get that sideways action that creates long-term resistance because mm-hmm. it like for example if i move out of the charts for example on the let's get on the monthly chart so you can actually see oh well, that's that's too big but let me see if i can spread it out I do this a lot better on my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's way easier. What if you go like that on the on the path? Like yeah, let, let's no. see. Now, yeah, oh. uh, no, it doesn't really expand it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah so uh yeah forgive me guys oh, so let's go let's go to a weekly chart then so if you see the weekly charts you can see we're here now you know we're, we're um so we we see, we have resistance here at 28 the last time remember people were saying oh it's gonna go to 10,000 it's mm -hmm. gonna go to three no actually right here you can see a lot of resistance at 28 mm -hmm. worst case scenario we'll get a 26 28 that's my opinion there's resistance here there 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 a lot yeah. of sideway action we're not i that's a that's a wall that's a brick wall mm -hmm. it, even if we get past this one right here which is we got to watch this level the the 40,000 level 39 but then it's very important uh -huh. after that it's no it's it's coming down to like 26 20, 28 yeah. i'm not saying no it's going to happen yeah so this yeah. is support you need that yeah see just like we get resistance up here at 64 63 you got 60 something levels so if it goes back up to this 53 range uh 63 i'm selling bitcoin not all of it just a portion just, of it yeah so w when it corrects again because it, it tends to go up correct go up correct go up correct it, it's patterns weekly pattern monthly mm -hmm. patterns when you see things like that it, this is the elon musk one <laughs> yeah this is That's a tweet it, right? this was a china yeah i mean i was right here i lost a bitcoin right here as well on the leverage oh my God. so but oh going back to elon musk so mm -hmm. Something very interest, interesting. And yeah, share this video uh, with, with people who want to learn about cryptos, guys. Yeah. Uh, we'll be doing this more often. Um, you know, we've been busy. Uh, I'm a real estate uh, investor. I flip properties. I'm a broker. Hey, for the next episode, I want to I wanna tell you um, about uh, re real estate properties sure. and sure. NFTs. And oh, that'd how, be awesome. Yeah. So we this, can make sense. So this guy, Mickey, uh, he's an NFT pro. He does basically... Um, Tell them a little bit about the NFTs that you do, the projects you have coming up. Yeah. I don't know if you want to reveal too much. But no, yeah, 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 that's fine. Well, just a little. Yeah, so I'm coming out with, with my own uh, NFT collection. It's going to be some uh, mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I have some tattoos, so it's going to be shrooms. But not the magic mushrooms. Not, well, these are magic mushrooms. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, because the utilities are Sweet. crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm coming out with them this year in, in a few, in a few uh, months. Uh, but yeah, I love NFTs. Uh -huh. I have about uh, 50 NFTs now. So um, I want to talk to you guys about it. So you guys, you know, get involved into into NFTs. It, it, it's really, yeah. really interesting. So right now, the hottest thing is the NFTs and the metaverse, of course. Um, you know, we, we, we actually can even tell you, um, we might throw in a few gems. So if you guys ask for the next video, we'll ask, we'll actually add in a few coins uh, we've and i think i do literally yeah. i do about two to three hours of research every day i've been doing it for the past five years um being in five years in crypto is an eternity uh pretty yeah. much is like a lifetime because this is also new everyone's still learning if they say oh i'm a bitcoin expert this and that they're lying to you because nobody is no. this is a new asset and actually you want to know a fact about bitcoin it's the fastest growing asset to reach a trillion dollars mm -hmm. it beat amazon it beat google it beat like so many and you know obviously gold has been around for five thousand years but again we we give the analogy that just because something's old it's not going to be around forever exactly like are you going to go to war with bows and arrows and rocks no right you could use guns sophisticated lasers and, and, and fight yeah so you would want to use the cutting edge technology so why are you going to yeah. use sticks stones and and old coins you yeah. want to use bitcoin bitcoin's the digital gold um, it's the, the future, thing. it's yeah. a new thing, but not only is new, it's perfect science. It's the perfect money. Mm -hmm. You know the word sound money? You want to know something interesting? Where the words, people hear, oh, the sound, what's sound money? People associate sound money with real money. Mm -hmm. Well, sound money came from the, the sound that a coin would make when it would fall, because that's how they would, mm -hmm. they would say, oh, it's real. Because they would always manipulate coins and add other substances other than copper, gold, and, 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 and uh, silver. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I like gold and silver, but don't get me wrong, I think it's still a hedge against inflation. But I think that slowly but surely, um, Bitcoin can 5X from here, and why 5X? And this is my prediction. So we have a $41,000 Bitcoin today. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Plan B was predicting um, hundred thousand Bitcoin at the end of the year but he said his his he used a stock to flow method mm -hmm. 
Mm. He's one of the great guys. And another guy, Willie Wu, is another great analyst. Those are my two favorite analysts, by the way. Yeah. But um, they were predicting $100,000 Bitcoin. And it was easily going to hit 100000 But COVID got in the way. Um, the Fed's slowing it down. It's not. They're not purposely trying to slow down this. They're trying to slow down inflation. Mm -hmm. Which, man, I mean, I don't want to pay $10 for, a, for an orange either. Exactly. Or, you know, you fill up your gas tank. It, it, we all feel the pinch. And it's inflation. I mean, you can't print $5 trillion and not expect any any uh, anything to yeah happen. any repercussions yeah, yeah exactly course. yeah so i was i was reading that the the minimum wage yeah, should be about 60 dollars for somebody to you know to be living good living, sure to be able to okay just pretty much pay bills eat yeah you know well, yeah we're and, all screwed yeah, yeah. The, the life <laughs> i like, just yeah. heard today that to live in san francisco comfortably you have to earn three hundred thousand a year it's crazy it's insane insane like seriously like th this 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 economy right now is like i think we're in a house of cards yeah any any push either direction will blow the whole lid off it so that's why it's important put money away put a fraction put a dollar just open a bitcoin account if you guys want you know we'll put the links on voyager coinbase even 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 Robin Hood, even those bastards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they're even trying, you know, their stock went down. I was so happy. Their stock went down from like 60 when it when the IPO to like, I think it was like $17. Yeah, or something. yeah. So it was crappy. crazy. Remember? But they don't even, yeah. you don't have private keys there. So that's another thing. People say, oh, I have, I have, I have um, uh, Bitcoin on Robin Hood. I'm like, well, you don't own it. It's on an exchange it's that exactly. you don't even have the keys. You can't. So like on any exchange, for example, like. If you go, uh, you, the, you have an address is what I meant. So for example, here on BlockFi, if you want to send me Bitcoin, I could just give you my address. Um, and um, mm -hmm. so I'll give you an example. Um, fund, I think fund. Yeah. So here's here's my address and you could send me Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have that address if you're in Robinhood. No. Um, so the, the only way you can you can pay, let's say, if you have a Robin Hood, is if you have the card and you cash out, right. then the cash is in the card and you can. It, it, it's still it's still a master right. card. Or, well, or there's actually side. there's actually better cards. I think uh, BlockFi offers a card with rewards. Voyager, um, Coinbase offers cards. Crypto.com. Yeah, everyone offers cards. Yeah. So there's no. There's not really no need for you to store um, money in your uh, bank anymore, mm -mm. Um, other than for emergencies. But like you can use crypto wallets now, and when you spend, they give you rewards in Bitcoin, which is awesome. I heard a guy who paid for his wedding, and like spent you know I don't know eight thousand dollars, and he got three point five percent back from BlockFi. It's not a commercial. I don't care. I mean, wow, no, yeah. but it's like, hey, they give you some crypto back. You might as well, right? <laughs> you might as well. Uh, so right. I think it's cool, man. It's it's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. yeah totally. So, oh, another thing. So every month, Voyager is paying me uh, a percentage, 5.75 for my Bitcoin. And so is BlockFi. So they pay you in crypto. For Cardano, they pay me. And for... Uh, Polygon, I think they pay 12% on Voyager, wow, if I'm not mistaken. That's cool. Polygon. That and Polygon just came out with some cool NFT stuff. They're, yeah, they're blowing up, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they are in, on the Ethereum blockchain, Yeah, they're right? on the ERC20 Ethereum. Yeah. So Ethereum, if you know, it's number two to Bitcoin in market share. And I think it's got a million uses. Don't sleep on Ethereum. I mean, $3,000 Ethereum is a bargain. Yeah, gas fees are crazy right now. Gas fees are crazy right now. They're working. But uh, I, I trust that uh, Vitalik will come up with something soon to cut the gas fees hopefully. because hopefully. Yeah. We gotta remember, compete with Solana. I, I was gonna buy a, a um, what's the name of the the board eight, yacht club. Oh, board eight yacht club. I was sure. gonna buy one on Mint. Um, so the price was like four hundred dollars for the for the NFT. And the gas fees were like a hundred and fifty thousand. It was crazy. It was insane. crazy. Yeah, and that's insane. why you see yeah. the the boardy yachts club selling for so expensive because mm -hmm. it's kind of like for you know the elites. Of, yeah, of people that own a lot of ether and crypto that got in early. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you don't have to be um, 
a whale. I mean, just get in and protect your family's wealth. I mean, get in crypto. Um, and we're giving you guys this information because yeah. we care about you. We also, want... the reason why we see all these drops when people get scared is mm -hmm. because they invest money that they can't invest. They use rent money. They use yeah. Don't use your yeah rent money. Yeah, for sure. Remember, if you if you're trying to invest on crypto or not crypto but uh, anything. stocks, anything, it has to be money that you don't need. So this is what yeah. I do. It's like, for example, yeah, exactly uh, what Mickey said. So like, if you let's say I don't know, you earn five thousand bucks that month, you, you got a good bonus and whatever. Just like put twenty percent of it away. 10%, be strict on it, live with less money. Because we spend, we blow our money on stupid shit anyway, right? Yeah, tell me about it. Dumb shit, see? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you might as well get strict and save your money and watch it grow, you know, before you know it, you, you want to retire and, and, uh, you, and it's, it's actually compounding interest. So if you keep your money on an exchange, um, they pay you interest and then you earn interest on top of interest, which is mm. great. Mm -hmm. You know, like Warren Buffett, he actually earned like um, most of his um, earnings the last few years because of compounding interest. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, I mean, it, it's, yes. it's pretty crazy how um, the web page is using significant memory. Okay, yeah, it's just, yeah, whatever. It's warning you about the memory. Oh. Yeah, um, but yeah, definitely. So compounding interest. Oh, and then uh, crypto security. A lot of people worry. Well, what if I lose my keys? What if I this? So you get a twelve. You get twelve uh, uh, a password phrase, and you can actually write that down, and you can store it in your wallet, and it's offline. You can't be hacked. Um, the government can't take it from you or whatever. It's just offline, mm -hmm. so you can just store it away. And even if you lose your your cold storage. You can replace it, but you have your private keys. You could just memorize them. You know, you, they, they'd have to kill you for that. But yeah, um, yeah. That's, hey, tell them the story about the guy that that's trying to find the oh his yeah wallet, his digital wallet in the whole city. Oh, there's a guy uh, <laughs> from England who was a uh, software engineer, and uh, he lost 7,500 um, Bitcoin. He lost a hardware, a computer. And he's paying people like a big reward right now. And they're excavating in junkyards looking for this damn hardware. Wow. I don't know. He, <laughs> what do you guys think? We should put a poll. Do you think he'll find it? Man, poor guy. I, I mean, this guy must not be able to sleep at Where night. Where is it going to be? Where I, this guy, imagine, he bought Bitcoin when it was like $100, $50. He's got about 7,500 Bitcoin out there imagine. in the world. and. He's, he's got no, the private keys are gone. Now, what what if it's broken? Well, he had, the thing is, he had, broken. yeah, that, that's one theory. It could be damaged and it's gone. And the thing is that he, there was an old method where you kept it and it was like a, like a QRB code. They didn't have the 12 keys. Uh, so once you transfer it to a hardware wallet, like I have, it's safe. You have your wallet, that's it. Yeah. If that thing gets damaged, you get another one. Mm -hmm. You order another one, they're 100 bucks. Yes. Trezor or Nano, there's two popular ones. There's there's more, they're evolving. Yeah. Now even you can have, for example, if you cash out right now and you pay uh, um, capital gains, because they treat crypto as a, um, what, what is it, like a, like a good? Like, it's like Pretty having much. property. If yeah. you sell a house, you get profit, you get capital gains. You sell stocks, capital gains. Um, same crypto, thing, yeah. same thing, but you can put it into a four in an IRA, like a self-directed IRA, and you pay up front for the sale, and um, you pay taxes now. If you think that Bitcoin will be like two hundred thousand, a million dollars down the road, which would be great, um, I think so. It, it'll be good to put a fraction of your Bitcoin, and you can also put Cardano in there, and you can trade within the, the, the IRA and mm -hmm. not pay capital gains. No, okay. So you can move it to US Tether, sell Bitcoin, buy again, mm -hmm. and you don't have to ha get triggered capital gains. Yeah. Because if you, that, now also like, let's say you sell some of your crypto um, and you hodl, I don't think that's the smartest thing to do. I think it is if you're long-term, but if you're gonna hold, for example, let's say Bitcoin hits 80 or 100, it might be wise to sell 
you know, let's say you own five Bitcoin. You could, sell you could sell one or two and then play off it that if it goes down to 40 again or 50, which it can in the future, then you buy two. So you end up owning two Bitcoin for one and all you did was wait. Mm -hmm. And how do you not trigger capital gains? You put it into a te tether wallet or a stable coin, what they call it. Mm -hmm. Stable coins also pay interest on, on, and they pay up to like 7%. On Femix, for example, here, on stable coins, I think it pays like um, 3% or something. Like so that. stable coins are pretty much they're always about crypto. a dollar. It's a crypto coin tied to the US dollar. Exactly. Where they move together. Where it's very not volatile, it's the opposite of volatility. So they move together with the dollar, so it's always at a dollar range. So like let's say I wanted let's say I felt like Bitcoin's gonna go to twenty. And I, if I thought that, I could sell my crypto and not trigger a capital gain sale. And if it went to twenty, if I own five, now I own ten. When mm -hmm. I buy back in at twenty, mm -hmm. nobody times the market that perfect. But yeah. <laughs> if you did, that'd be awesome, yeah, right? Exactly. But anyway, it's ideal. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's uh, interesting stuff we're talking about. I mean, yeah. You learning cool. stuff. I'm really starting. You learning? Are you bored? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I, we need some beers or something. Yeah. You want right. a beer? Yeah. Let, 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 Do you let, have any? Let, 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 <laughs> see. I got tequila for sure. Oh my god. Yeah, like typical Mexican, he has tequila. So guys, I hope you guys are learning something. Um, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Uh, you know, we want to do more of these. Uh, I know this is live, but we want to also record some where you can actually watch them again, which would have been a good idea. So, yeah. Say hi, Karen. They're watching. Oh, oh, this is the camera. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Camera. Oh, what did you say? About the camera? You can turn off the panel for me. Oh. <laughs> all right so mickey's back oh my god he's got the tequila he wasn't yeah. kidding dude no look at this wow Don julio let's do it yeah actually we have some people watching this is our first one ever yeah, so that's cool thank Congrats. you Seth. thank you even the cats are excited yeah <laughs> look at him hey dude what's up did you learn something <laughs> yeah this is cool uh, actually smash up the like button send it to your friends Right now, we're just gonna stay live for a few more minutes, and then uh, we also do them in Spanish. Yeah. He's got a channel, Cripteando TV. Cripteando TV, yeah, follow me if you wanna learn about this in Spanish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I also want Henry to, to be on it uh, in mm -hmm. Spanish. Yeah, if you have time, maybe we can do one, a uh, live one in Spanish, mm -hmm. and then, uh, but we should also record them so that people can play them back too. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, we do have uh, people in the Facebook group that have been asking me, Sorry, I haven't had time. It's been super busy. Right now, um, the, you know, the housing market's hot. We are flipping houses, so it, it's, it's um, yeah. that's what we're doing, man. That's I mean, cool, that's cool. Yeah, and if they have any ideas, let, let's do something. So sure. for, for the next one, we're, we're gonna record it, uh -huh. we're gonna edit it, and upload it, right? For sure. So, so people can see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's what we should do. Um, yeah. I just didn't know how to do it this time, but. Um, yeah, no, yeah. And uh, also in Spanish, we're going to do the same thing in Spanish, okay? Yeah, so yeah, we promise to do those more often, um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are learning something, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think we'll get um, more people to tune in once we save it, and because I think I'm sure, yeah. some parts of the world are like, it's late. Yeah, and if they got any ideas for you or for us to, you for know, sure. for you to talk about, write it down, let us know. Yeah, for sure. Any questions, we would be happy to answer those. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, I don't know, you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think we... So, we, okay, what do you think is going to happen from here? From where we're at right from now? From here? Well, from I, the 41. Well, I have a large bet that we're going to go up. up. I think we can go up. If we break past 42.6... 42.6 is the resistance. We've been bouncing off 
around 42 100 42 to 200 mm -hmm. if we break past this which the more chances that we go up the more chances is going to go up do you think I, I think that right now we're forming a bullish divergence mm -hmm. and i think we can easily go up to 43 then if we get past 43 we can end up at 52. Okay. i think this is where we're going to end up well, no, actually, we we have a lot of resistance here at 47. Mm -hmm. That's where we were bouncing off uh, <clears throat> before all this happened. Yeah, yeah, and it's exactly it's been like that. It's been between the 40 something, almost 50. Yeah, you see, we had a lot of sideways action yeah. right here. I mean, and this was when the market was still kind of normal. This was the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, another big factor, Mickey, why we had a, a sell-off mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. People pay their taxes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of people that made a lot of money off Bitcoin that at the end of the year, they pay their taxes. So, so what what do you think about it? So people, so, some people... So remember it was at 52 uh -huh. and it went all the way down to about 47. This is normal action after the end of the year. Yeah. This is people paying their yeah, taxes. They needed, yeah. Right. They you got, yeah, you got people that that um, maybe gained a lot of money on, on, on um, stocks and, and, um, and Bitcoin, especially like even now institutions are starting to get in. So they have to show their balance sheet. They got to show also profits. Yeah. So they sell the Bitcoin, um, and a lot or people just got to pay their taxes. If if they rebuy Bitcoin cheaper, mm -hmm. can they avoid paying taxes for that? Yeah. Right. If 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 so, pretty much if you sell, if, if you sell, if you sell and for a loss, if you yeah. sell for a loss, then you don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. But if you sell and rebuy again. Um, mm, no, it's going to be, it's going to, the new basis is going to be based on what you bought it again in the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. So then it's based on the second buy. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. like, for example, if, if I sold profits at 57, mm -hmm. I pay taxes at that. What was my entry? Was it 40? Then I made, you know, I pay taxes based on the, what I earned. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then if I sold here and I, it was for a loss, then I don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. You know that's a that that can actually probably even be um, deducted, mm -hmm. and then if you buy in here, well then lucky for you, you bought in at a yeah. low price. Uh -huh. You know, the, the the thing is to get in low and sell high. So you want to earn, mm -hmm. um, but you know I think that uh, no one could tend the market perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we all could, we'd be all rich. And, yeah, exactly. So honestly, I think you should like. Oh, or on the next episode or yes whenever you want uh talk about compound interest oh yeah because that's huge i mean For if sure. people understand that they can they can make make a lot of money yeah like over that. the years and it's it's something that um it, it's something that you just uh it's there and they they don't know it's there so yeah yeah and it, it's like you just earn interest on top of interest so it's great yeah so if you have a thousand dollars in the bank and you generate 20 percent let's say per year then at the end of the year year you're gonna have 1200 so then the next year you're gonna earn interest based on those on those 1200 not on the initial yeah and it's monthly brand. for yeah. example if you're earning interest monthly like let's say on the stable coins so if they pay you let's say 50 bucks extra now you're earning interest on top of that 50 bucks plus what you had plus whatever a, a price accumulation yeah right so if bitcoin's going up in price for example yeah so i think it's great i think we're pretty much stable now i yes, mean right now the bulls and bears are fighting at around there's a lot there's going to be a lot of resistance at that level mm -hmm. which is great because that's going to be a new level of support mm -hmm. in case we break up higher it's going to just bounce back we might see sideways consolidation mm -hmm. And then the move up. I think that's what I'm predicting, Mickey. I think tomorrow we can end up like around 45, 40, 40, 43 mm -hmm. right here at this level. So I think I can, we can wake up tomorrow. That would be great. But Imagine, yeah. again, you know, do, do, do you think it's going to be or it's going to get closer to a hundred K? Yeah, uh, I think time soon. Or I what? think uh, I think um, when people, the scare goes away from the feds. We might see yeah. 100K. I think the feds say that in uh, March, the, or the first quarter, after the first quarter, they're going to raise the rate. So when that happens, mm -hmm. we might see a little bounce back too. So it might be good to play that Let's see. since we already know. Yeah. At the end of March, maybe um, shorting it yeah. at that time. Yeah. We'll be good. Yeah. Why not? All right. Well, good. 
Do you want to do one in Spanish? Let's do it. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's do so, it in Spanish. We'll see you guys later. Come Bye. On. How do we end the game? Uh, go to OBS. Yeah, you learn something?